Hello YouTube, it is I, Chaswood Almighty here, and I wasn't going to do another video on feminism. I was going to wait till Anita Sarkeesian released her next part of her Tropes vs. Women in Video Game series. However, it's been a month since the last one, it doesn't look like the next one's coming out anytime soon. Uh, if I was one of her backers, I'd be pissed. I'm not, so ha <laughs> ha. However, I was watching a video done by Snake, the good old man with the eye patch, and it was about this group of people called those pesky dames. And, well, this is what I saw. It just feels like we're not allowed to talk about women without also talking about men, or without also acknowledging men, without also making space for men. Yeah, well, that's the bitch about equality, you know. You kind of have to represent the views of everybody, that's what being equals means. If you don't represent the views of everybody in a topic, then you're not discussing equality, you're discussing privilege. I'm sure you should understand that, really. Um, and if you suppress another opinion and say that it shouldn't be discussed, then that's fascism. Some ad campaigns are brilliant and innovative and creative, and that is exactly what advertising should be, you know, advertising at its best. Speaking from sort of like the advertiser's perspective, surely isn't advertising at its best when it makes the most money. Some advertising, however, is uh, the product of lazy, talentless, bastard marketing execs. Oh, now come on, I'm sure they're not all that bad. Tell us how you really feel. Uh, who produce two kinds of crappy ads in relation to sexism. First kind is adverts which sell you something by telling you that you're not good enough without it. Um, L'Oreal, because you're not worth it. I'm sort of thinking specifically of ads aimed at women for things like makeup, diet pills, or cosmetic surgery. You know, those sort of touchy subjects, like if you knew somebody who maybe smelt a little bit, had body odour, in, you know, they're your friend and you feel like it's up to you to sort of say to them, look, you might want to use a little bit of links in the morning. You know, that kind of delicate sort of issue that you have to address. The second kind, which is the kind, given the video topic that I'm going to focus on, are adverts which portray women as tired old sexist stereotypes or use women's bodies and sexuality to sell you their shit. Um, Fairy, who make washing up liquid, um, have recently made an ad to commemorate their something anniversary, I don't really care. That's nice, be just totally dismissive of the points you're talking about. Well done. Um, and it's a mock-up of fairy ads throughout the year, so you know, it goes from um, black and white to colour, you can see all like the different fashion trends. But in every single ad, the person holding the washing up liquid is a woman. So you mean, ever since it's sort of like its first days of advertising, where its key demographic has been women, so it's used them in the advert, and that's been kind of a recognisable trend to that brand. That it's kind of repeated it because it's how we recognise the brand that that makes them wrong. It's just like, I don't know if you're aware, chewing gum adverts will have this set shot the way the chewing gum goes into the mouth. It's always got to be done a little bit differently by each chewing gum thing. They all have their signature biting of a bit of horrible gum. Now, you can argue that when you actually look at statistics, women do do the vast majority of domestic labour, which is true. And it sucks, and that's a result of sexism. In your mind, what in the real world isn't a result of sexism? And if the main people who are going to use a product are women, then surely uh, peeling the advert to them is kind of the smart thing for the advertisers to do. The fairy are simply trying to appeal to their target market demographically, so I should really get off their back for reflecting reality. Glad you see it my way. Well, the thing is... Advertising affects real life. No, it doesn't. It really does. And I'm sorry, back that claim up with some evidence first, because there are no studies which actually show that the media can directly influence somebody. Now, what the media can do is it can open us up to a multitude of different ideas and different products and concepts. It can't directly influence the products and concepts that we have. 
uh, hegemony is only a, a theory. It's not. It's not a theory like I don't know. Say evolution. So yeah, just remember that. The more we see domestic labour being presented as the responsibility of a woman, the more that we think domestic labour is the responsibility of a woman. On that same logic then, we should just ban Call of Duty and Battlefield, because all that is is just perpetuating the stereotype that shooting people can be fun. Now, advertising using women's bodies and sexuality to sell products. Yeah, because it's never been proven that sex sells. And trust me, the way in which women's bodies are literally cut up in advertising has a really harmful effect um, on women and society. If the Again. Prove it. The only way that we see women in advertising as sexual objects um, designed and presented specifically for our consumption, having no other purpose, then that changes the way that we see women in real life. I see constant stereotypes everywhere that men have to like football. Personally, I can't stand the fucking sport. In fact, I can't stand spectating sport in general. I think it's shit. Latin American women are often depicted as having like an uncontrollable lust and sexuality. And Asian women are often pictured as docile and compliant. The fuck? How is this socially acceptable to do? This is like leaving aside the fact that we live in a really racist society and... Yes, because black people aren't allowed to vote and the KKK is the force. In fact, it's so racist. Just earlier, I was in my garden whipping a nigger because he wasn't picking my corn right. That's how racist our society is still. When you're in an abusive relationship, it can be really hard to recognise it. Your abuser knows exactly what they're doing. They know how to make you feel guilty, how to make you feel like you're overreacting, like it's your fault, like you deserve it. I'm not going to really concentrate much on this video because I kind of agree with what she's doing, but... This is a link that is on that video's description to a collection for donation for helping uh, victims of abuse. Now, I don't mind that, but I just want to know when 40% of abuse victims in the UK are men, uh, are you going to give 40% of your donations? to help men's shelters because if you are that's good and that's fine but if you're not then that's discriminatory and not for equality and it would have been great to have a chance to talk more about that but instead i ended up spending about half an hour talking mostly about international men's day and men's issues and defending the reason why uh, feminism and International Women's Day and women's issues are generally given more attention and are seen of more immediate importance Oh, right, so women are more important than men. Oh, thanks for clearing that up. So, sexism then. We're not even going to talk about the fact that for those women who are in combat, they're more likely to be raped by their fellow soldiers than they are to be killed by enemy fire. I'm sorry, you can't just make a statement like that and not back it up with any statistics or facts or figures. Um, but we talk, we're, we're talking, or we want to talk, about the type of violence that women face. I'm shocked. I'm just so sick of knowing that every time we try and talk about something like rape or sexual violence, we're going to have to fend off people who... Irony. When has being nice about something ever won struggles? I don't know. Perhaps a lot of the civil rights movements were based on people who believed in peaceful protest. Like, for instance, um, Mahatma Gandhi, a very well-known civil rights movement, he said, I object to violence because when it appears to do good, the good is only temporary. The evil it does is permanent. So, it kind of does a lot of the time, really. The suffragettes didn't get their votes because they asked politely. The suffragettes did mainly protest peacefully, although they did break out into some militantism, which actually hurt a lot of their cause more than helped it. The black civil rights movement didn't have their successes in America because they were sweet and kind. I'm sorry, but Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on the bus. She didn't hit people. And if you want to talk about American civil rights, 
Let's go and have a look at Wikipedia at Martin Luther King, shall we? Well, would you look at that? It says here on Wikipedia that Martin Luther King was for non-violent civil disobedience. So, basically, peaceful protesting. I'm fucking angry, right? And I have a right to be angry. There is so much for me to be angry about. Always look on the bright side of life. And because I'm so furious, so genuinely furious, I can't just turn it off when it's convenient. Like, even if it was possible, I would refuse to. Why should I? Why should I play nicely nicely so that I don't offend some liberal wanker who's making it all about them? No, because I can't think of a group of people who decide something offends them and then makes it all about them. What's that group actually? Uh, Felianism? Uh, fannyism? Fucking mentalism? Oh, no, that's right. Feminism. Like, if you're going to be offended or upset or scared off by my anger then clearly you're not the kind of ally that I want or need yeah be more like these people you should be fucking ashamed of yourself you're fucking scum you are fucking scum fucking brave apologist incest supporting woman hating fucking scum that was the situation in Toronto there yes uh, by all means just be physically and verbally abusive and aggressive towards people uh, because that's always such a nice thing to do. I'm sorry, any feminists watching this uh, who believe in, you know, being civil and human rights, let me tell you, if Martin Luther King, Gandhi, and half the suffragettes were to see that shit going on, they would be fucking ashamed of you. They wouldn't support your movement because they'd be ashamed at the bullying tactics you use to get your way. And in fact, I hope some of the suffragettes have seen that, because they'd be spinning in their graves. Hey dames, uh, so I wanted to make a video about weight, because that's been on my mind recently. What was that? Rape? Oh sorry, weight. Uh, you, usually with your feminists it's rape. Um, also, I now work on Oxford Street, which is like the epicentre of bullshit capitalism profiting from insecurity, so like everything I see it's just like fucking photoshopped to like the nth degree. Yeah, don't forget to give capitalism a kick in the shin as well. If you don't like capitalism, why don't you fuck off to China and enjoy communism? And like, I think previously where I used to have mostly feminist conversations about body posy stuff. Body posy stuff. I fucking hate people who talk like that. Now, because I work as a bra fitter. Bra fitting? What happened to the bra-burning feminist, you know, removing the shackles of oppression? Now you're chaining women up in them? Hypocrisy! I'm sorry, right, but pretty much you're a student. And I'm probably going to say that most of the women in this thing uh, have been students. And it just seems to be that universities now are just a fucking haven for feminist indoctrination. Anyway, I've been Chasm Almighty. And good night.